The Justice Department's initial investigation finds there was a lapse in protocol when the Bureau of Corrections allowed the Kibaloy-owned network SMNI to interview kidnapping convict former military general Jovito Palparan. Justice Secretary Menardo Guevara tells reporters Friday, June 3, relevant rules under the Manual of Operations of the BUCOR were not properly observed like rules on media access of persons deprived of liberty or PDLs. Guevara adds interviews with high-profile PDLs like Palparan require the authorization of the Justice Secretary and the observance of reasonable conditions, such as no discussion of any pending cases before the media. Guevara says he sent a show-cause memorandum to BUCOR Director General Gerald Bantag on May 30, with an order to reply within 10 days of receipt. SMNI interviewed Palparan on March 30 in a program that hyped the publicity campaign against activists. Palparan was convicted in 2018 by a court in Bulacan for kidnapping two desaparecido student activists. Mothers of the activists and the lawyers have slammed this interview as a cheap shot. Mothers of both desaparecidos have also asked the National Telecommunications Commission to suspend or revoke the principal license and impose a cease and desist order against SMNI. SMNI is owned by doomsday preacher Apollo Kibuloy, who is wanted in the United States for sex trafficking of children. Alleged Visayan drug lord Kerwin Espinosa is cleared of one of several drug trade charges. After the star witness admitted to the court, he was forced to admit he engaged in drug sales and transactions. Espinosa is one of the witnesses in the 2016 congressional investigations against Senator Laila de Lima. He accused de Lima of being involved in the new Bilibid prison drug trade. The newest order from the Makati Regional Trial Court says the prosecution failed to bring new evidence and therefore sustained its December 2021 ruling. In the December 2021 order, Judge Gina Babat Palamos said that because key witness Marcelo Adorco retracted, the prosecution's case against the Espinosa group crumbles. Espinosa already retracted his claims against De Lima. The two key witnesses in the cases against De Lima, former corrections officer Rafael Ragos and the former senator's bodyguard Ronnie Dayan, have also retracted. Incoming Justice Secretary Jesus Crispin Boying Remulia says he is open to looking at the possibility of the prosecution dropping the charges if it is the only recourse. Need more context, clarity, and perspective? Get the full picture with Rappler Plus. With exclusive content and events, you'll get an opportunity to discuss issues with reporters, experts, and featured guests while helping Rappler continue its fearless journalism. Join now. Senator Bongo says on Thursday, June 2, he and President Rodrigo Duterte will remain members of the PDP Laban. This despite the anticipated exit of its members to President-elect Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr.'s party. Marcos chairs the Partido Federal ng Pilipinas and successfully ran for the presidency as its standard bearer. Go says he and Duterte would stick it out with PDP Laban even when it ceases to be the ruling party and notes he and Duterte won their seats in the national government as members of the party. The PDP Laban is a merger of two parties founded by the late former senators Aquilino Nene Pimentel Jr. and slain Senator Benigno Ninoy Aquino Jr. to fight the Marcos dictatorship. Dr. Manuel Haujan, acting secretary general of the PDP Laban faction led by Senator Aquilino Coco Pimentel III, said Duterte and Go are with the Cusi Wing, which the Commission on Elections on Bank recognized as legitimate. U.S. President Joe Biden urges Congress to ban assault weapons, expand background checks, and implement other sensible gun control measures to address a string of mass shootings that have struck the United States. For God's sake, how much more carnage are we willing to accept? How many more innocent American lives must be taken before we say enough, enough? Recent shootings in different states stunned the United States, prompting calls to change gun laws in America. It's time for each of us to do our part. It's time to act for the children we've lost, the children we can save, for the nation we love. The president, a Democrat, calls for a number of measures historically opposed by Republicans in Congress, including banning the sale of assault weapons. He also wants to raise the minimum age to buy those weapons from 18 to 21. Biden presses Republicans, particularly in the U.S. Senate, to allow bills with gun control measures to come up for a vote. Shortly after Biden delivered a speech on gun violence, another shooting incident in an Iowa church parking lot kills two women. 
The suspect then turns the gun on himself, resulting in his death. Chris Aquino is heading to Houston, USA to receive treatment for eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangitis, or EGPA, the rare life-threatening disease she was diagnosed with in April. According to the American Lung Association, EGPA is an ultra-rare disease where inflammation of the blood vessels results in the restriction of blood flow. It can cause organ damage in the body if left untreated. On Instagram on June 3, Chris shares a video update on her health and bids goodbye before flying to the USA for treatment for the next few years. She adds, time is now her enemy, given the nature of her disease. In the video, Aquino's doctor, Nino Gavino, explains that with no medical intervention, the life expectancy of EGPA patients is at 25%, while the five-year survival rate with proper treatment is at 62%. Meantime, Aquaman actor Amber Heard will appeal a jury's decision that she defamed ex-husband Johnny Depp when she claimed she was a survivor of sexual violence, her attorney said on Thursday, June 2. A seven-person jury in Virginia ruled on Wednesday, June 1, Depp wins the case and receives more than $10 million in damages, while Heard gets $2 million. Elaine Charlson Bredehoft, one of Heard's attorneys, says on NBC's Today Show, that Heard's lawyers were not allowed to tell the jury a London High Court judge found Depp guilty of abusing Heard. During the trial, Depp said he never hit or sexually abused Heard and argued she was the one who became violent during their relationship. Heard said she slapped Depp, but only in defense of herself or her sister. <laughs> 